Hi, this lesson is about how to actually knit the garment you've designed on the screen. So we've been through the lessons where you've been shaping, um, you've developed this pattern, um, I, this one I've actually drawn in standard garment st uh, styling and then I've uh, gone into the original pattern drafting and just tweaked it a bit. It's only a baby's pattern. Uh, so I now want to knit this, but if you if you came from it fresh and there wasn't a pattern here, uh, you can go in the same way and you can pick it out of the browser. So whichever way you want to go up here on the left where it says interactive knitting. I'll just stop for a moment. There we are. Interactive knitting. Click on that and it will give you on-screen instructions. So this is not for a brother, this is a silver reed machine. So we can browse our shape patterns or because I've been working with it, the baby uh, cardigan SHP pattern is, is there already for me. But if I wanted to, I can browse the shape patterns and I get my library of patterns here to choose from. I'll click on the baby pattern though because I'm working with that. Now it comes up with a list of the pieces of the pattern I can knit. So if I want to work with the front left, I choose that, or the right. It will only work with one piece at a time. And if you can see the dots here, SGS with the row of dots means that the whole pattern was generated in standard garment shaping. The two little dots under OPD original pattern drafting show that I edited these two pieces in the original pattern drafting. So it, it gives you a bit more information here. If I choose my left front, uh, I'm not going to integrate it with the stitch, stitch pattern. This is purely about shaping. So I'm going to choose shape only, say OK. Uh, I have to decide where I want my carriage to start. Well, we are creatures of habit, so we usually have our carriage on the right, uh, and that would allow you to um, you know, but it allows you to move to the left or the right, so you can choose. It depends if you've got a colour change you're working uh, or how you want to knit your pattern. And then you can also choose a machine knit or a hand knit. And because we are on a machine knit, we're going to say wrong side facing, which means that you will get the back of stocking stitch showing uh, on the pattern as it would on your knitting machine. So you're not going to end up, provided you leave it wrong side facing each time, you're not going to end up with two left fronts or two right fronts because they're asymmetrical. So say OK. And now you get the interactive knitting screen. This has got the information you need to cast on with. Now I'm not connected to a knitting machine here. I'm purely sitting on design and it talking to you about this. Uh, but I will do one where I'm connected to a knitting machine when I've got it all set up. But at the moment I'm working with a different machine. So the information, it's got a count down here. It's greyed out at the moment, but that will count down as I move up the piece. Uh, it tells me how many needles I'm working on here. Uh, it tells me my row count should be at zero. I'm knitting one piece and uh, I'm um, I'm on row one of the piece and I've got uh, left needle 22 to right needle 23 up and ready to knit. Um, see ready instruction for cast on. So it will actually tell me a bit more about casting on when I press go. Then on the right here you've got the the little picture of your knitting carriage here at the bottom of the piece. This is the piece we're going to knit. Up here you've got your neck shaping and your shoulder shaping and it get, tells you at which row you are going to start shaping. So on the right you're going to start at row 86 and then it will carry on and give you more instructions. This is the first shaping instruction on the right and on the left it's not till row 101 and then you carry on shaping your shoulder. So it's giving you a heads up about where you start so you're going to start your neck earlier. Down here there is a blown up um, close up of the the bed so you've got your needles um, all set out and your stitches set out you can't see the needles you can see the stitches um, and it will move up as you knit so you can actually move yourself up here with these little arrows or with these arrows here um, move yourself up and down and see what's happening um, you can blow it up and see it uh, a bit closer or a, like it's folded round itself but we've only got a small number of needles so we really don't need um, to see that. So we can go there, we've gone back to the, the bottom row. These ones are like a fast forward up to the top, fast forward down cast to the bottom. Off. Oh, you see it says cast off. So it talks to you. That's because I've got this little um, icon here with the lips and the, and the speech bubble activated so she's talking to me. You can have music or a bell ringing and the light highlights the instruction for you. So what you would do next is um, click on the orange arrow and it will give you the casting on instructions to cast on, knit the welt if you've got one, finish your welt so you've done all your welt knitting and then you have your carriage at the right. 
Now I'm not going to um, uh, have a machine. So I would click, if I click OK, it would take me through all of the, uh, you know, it, it then talks me through setting up and putting my uh, my needle cams up because um, you actually have to put a sort of little sliding cams on the silver readout. But because I've got a machine at the moment, I'll have to show that to you later. But it's going to say it can't find a uh, design needle at the moment. But I'll say OK and it can't find it. So I'll just cancel that. But what will happen is when you press the green one and there's a machine attached, every time you move your carriage across, it it will move. You see how that's moving up the knitting here? And it's also showing your carriage going left to right. So you move all the way up like this. And it, literally every row is being counted. You can see it's moving up here. Uh, it's telling you where you are. It's telling you what your row counter should be set at and that your needles remain the same. It isn't until you get right up here, you can click on it and see, that you begin to get shaping. So we're going to go to the neckline. See how it's changed colour and it's beeped at me. Decrease. Right. One. Two. So she's just told me, you might have heard that, decrease on the right 12 stitches. She said one, two. She means 12 stitches on the right. So you would decrease 12 stitches. That would be a cast off. Or if you were doing holding, you would hold um, 12 stitches on the right. And then you'd knit your row. And there's nothing to happen because the instruction was over here was you knit two rows. Decrease. Right. Three. So she's telling me decrease three stitches on the right. I find it quite annoying because it's very slow. You might just want a bell or something to remind you to stop you knitting the next row. So you carry on. And each time there is a decrease or an decrease. increase. Right. Three. She'll talk to you. And that carries on. And then when you get to the, to the shoulder shaping, you get more instructions. Decrease. Right. Three. I'm up at the shoulder now. Maybe I'm not. There we are. Decrease. Left. Eight. So now she's telling me to decrease eight stitches at the left. And so you, you have to keep your eye on this screen. But having the, the audio uh, set up helps because it just stops you going too far. And also you can see the yellow highlights. So those are quite good um, reminders. Um, and I will do a video of you showing of actually knitting on the machine. But um, that's it, really. Uh, you have to know how to do your cast offs and your holding and all these things. But this is telling you how to do it rather than having a printout. So it's a useful way of working. But you do obviously have to have the computer tied to the machine all the time with its plugs in. Whereas if you do a printout, you can take it off and do it on another, mach another machine. So it is very much how you're going to work, probably in the workshops you would work with printouts just purely because there aren't enough computers but uh, and you, you don't have to work on an electronic machine to use design in it this is just how you do it if you want to so i hope that was helpful